So at this point, we've gotten up to the level of iterated exponentiation, uh, which is basically sometimes called titration or use a double up arrow notation. And I, like I said, I'm going to abbreviate that occasionally T when it's going to come up in various contexts and, and we need a really tight abbreviation for it. So we've, we've started with successor and all we've done is uh, a simple recursion and iteration idea that the next function is defined in terms of the previous function. It's definitely a recursion idea. And it's defined in terms of iterating that where the number of iterations is just the input number. So we can keep doing that and we get past the double up arrow. Um, so we can say the fourth level, the, the fourth uh, function in the fast growing hierarchy is we take, oh, this should be a dot. Oops, there we go. Um, we take that third function in the hierarchy and we repeat it n times on n, or a very succinct way to say that is take t, that abbreviation, and do it n times on n. Of course, remember that's just t of t of t, oops, of t of dot 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 of t of t of n, n times, um, just repeating the operation of the tetration style operation n times. So very similar to before, when you put in a one, it just degenerates. Um, if you put in a two already though, it's pretty substantial. So this is just two iterations of T. So it's not like we're maxing out the iteration idea, but that's T of, we figured out that T of two is 2048. It's the last one that's like, you know, just a few digits. And so what is that? Remember the T doesn't mean just exponentiate. It means exponentiate this many times, or in other words, it means take 248, 2048, double it that many times. Then take that number, store it, double it that many times. Then take this entire thing, store that, double it that many times, and then do it again and again and again and again until the last term is going to be this tower of 2 to the 2048 times 2 to the 2048 times 2 to the alternating um, 2048s and powers of 2. That's well bigger than, but you know, morally in the same ballpark as taking 2048 as your very uppermost exponent and raising two to that and then raising two to that and raising two to that, two to that, two to that, 2047 times, if you would do it right or if I did it right. And that's a, a bit more than two to the two to the two to the two to the two repeated 2048 times, which is two double up 2048. And um, that's quite, quite, quite a bit bigger than two double up of two double up two. Turns out that's the definition of, ooh, that's actually equals. That's the definition of triple up. And so if you want to look at my other ridiculously large number videos, toward the start, I talk a lot about double ups and triple ups. Um, and that's, the definition is simply a triple up arrow is repeat the double up arrow um, a certain number of times. So if you, uh, if that gives you some intuition about where we are in big numbers, that's, that's helpful. Uh, but the main thing we just need to know is that we took this operation T, which is the double exponentially uh, operation, and then we iterated that. And so we get this iterated exponential and then iterate that. Um, and that's a pretty big thing. When at, for this whole series, what you want to do, <laughs> it's going to be probably a little bit of an exercise in, in self-deception a little bit, um, is at any particular point, you want to stop and just sort of say, okay, do I have some sort of feel, even a little bit of feel of what say T is doing, right? And that was the third function. That was this level where we're, we're already doing a lot of exponential iteration. Um, and then if that's just utterly, utterly like, ah, that's beyond my understanding, you want to stop there and just play with it and do examples, things like that. Um, but if you just have the, have the tiniest bit of confidence, they're like, okay, I, I get that that's big. I have some sense that it's bigger than the previous. Okay, I'm ready to go on. Then you want to just really concentrate on how much bigger the next step is. To what extent is um, when I do the next iteration of this process, how much bigger is it than what I was just doing? 
And that's going to be for the this this one. This doesn't quite really give a sense of how much bigger F4 is because I'm only putting in a two. So let's go ahead and go to three. Um, how much bigger is the F4 dot function? If you put in three, that starts to give us a little more of a, re a realistic idea because now you take T of three. Okay, that is already this guy. This isn't a super intimidating number. That's like a it's a you know it's two to the two to the something but it's not ridiculous okay and now i'm going to take t of that which does this double up arrow repeated exponentiation thing and then i use that to control another double up arrow repeated exponentiation process okay so if you want to write that out okay that's at least if we sort of change it into the just two to the up arrow stuff we first take something that's a bigger than 2 to the 2 to the 24. So I'm just kind of stripping off the less essential bits of this. This is bigger than 2 to the 2 to the 24. And then I'm using that to control how many times I do a, a stack of two exponentiations. So 2 to the 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 2. And I would repeat that this many times, which is a heck of a lot, all with the last exponent being that guy. And that is a significant underestimate for what's going on. And then I still have to do the tetration level um, f function on that one more time. So that's bigger than two, t applied to 2 double up, 2 double up, 3. That's a vast underestimate, but I'm just trying to sort of get the, the pattern here. And, well, t is roughly a 2 double up something. And so now I'm taking... 2 double up 3, which is not a scary big number. It's a, you know, a bit less than this guy. Then I'm 2 double upping that, which is already a tower of exponentials. And then I'm 2 double upping that. Okay, that's where we start to get to see, okay, we're really repeating. We take a result of an iterated exponential, and then that becomes the number of 2s in a tower of exponentials. Um, and that is, um, if this were a 2 here, that would be the definition of do a triple up to triple up four. And again, I'm not going to focus on the double up, triple up stuff, but just if, if that's at all familiar, that can help. So, but the main thing is we're getting a sense of how F4 is really huge because we're doing this T operation. And every time we do a T operation, we put that into the next T operation, which grows so fast. And then we put it into another T operation, which is going to give us a huge, huge number because t grows so fast and we put such a big input into it. So um, this idea of recursion, which is we use the best function we've ever invented so far in this process, which is t, and then we repeat that by plugging its input into right into it, or its output right into its input um, a growing number of times. So that gives us some sort of sense of the F4 level. Now this this is getting even these guys, we have to start using these double up notations. Um, this maybe is not absolutely mind blowing because you can think, okay, power towers of two, just repeat a few times, but we're going to get so, so, so much further than this. Um, so we're going to have to have some trust that we can still comprehend things by looking at the structure and getting some idea of like, oh, we've, we've built on our previous amazingness in this systematic way. So let's see if that works. So. To summarize what we've done so far, the key the, the the key equation is just a very simple equation. It's that to define the k plus first function in this hierarchy, and then we need to, def to define it, we need to say, what does it do to input n? It just says, take the kth function, iterate it n times on n. Literally, just that and the seed, right, which was f of 0n is the successor of n. That is the entire definition of everything we've done, and we're just expanding that out. And so that doesn't have to stop for any finite k. We're, it, we've got something where we've already, um, with not too much sophistication at all, just the notion of a function and repeat a function, iterate a function, and the notion of successor, um, we've gotten a sequence of faster and faster growing functions. Um, and just at a kind of meta-mathematical foundations or mathematics level, I've been comparing it to exponentials and towers of exponentials, all, all that kind of stuff. We don't have to know 
we, we don't have to know these kinds of ex things that previously exist. We don't need to know a single exponential or multiplication or even decimal numer numeration even exists. This is really fundamental. We just have to know that there's something that we can make sense of as tag something as a successor. And then the fundamental notion is a f notion of a function. And it, once you've got a notion of a function, you're going to be able to plug the output into the input. So iteration at this level pretty much all comes for free. So it is really stripped down in terms of what kinds of axiomatics you need to make this, this work. Um, that's not the main thing I'm, we're going to be focusing on, but it, I, think, I think it's significant. So we've, we've, it's, it's easy to get a sequence of faster and faster growing functions. So we've uh, basically defined f of k dot for all natural numbers k. And so if I had f of 100 comma 1000, that's going to be a really, really big number. But we're going to go way beyond that. Okay. Um, what, what do we know? Each f of k function is tremendously fast growing. Um, and every time you go to the next one, because you iterate the one you just had, each one is tremendously faster than the one before it. So that's pretty cool. Um, but now I want to show you the other really, really big piece of this that really supercharges it. Um, not going to be surprised if you if you have seen anything about the fast growing hierarchy, but if you haven't, it's 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 pretty cool. Um, we're going to use a function inside of the f function. So here we've just been the the inputs and outputs have just been integers, and the functions have just been the f's. But now <clears throat> we're going to say suppose that alpha is any function. So right now it's just going to be a function from the integers to the integers. Um, typically it's going to be an increasing function. Technically it doesn't have to be, but it will be for us. It does not have to be a fast growing function, and we'll see it's going to be the dorkiest simplest function in a second, the, the, the first example that we're going to use. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to define that f of alpha, and we're going to use that as a control argument. So far, we've only used uh, non-negative integers as control arguments. But now we're going to say it's sort of the alpha th f function applied to input n. Well, I can totally figure out what to do with that. What you do is you take n and you put it into alpha. Oh, alpha is something that takes a number and spits out a number. And so this is going to be one of those f k n's because alpha of n is some integer k. And we know how to do that in principle if we continue that story about f4 n, f5 n, f6 n. And I want to assume we've kind of done that for, for all natural numbers k. That's what we've got up here. And this is what we would call a diagonalization step. And I'll show you a picture. Uh, in a little bit to show, say, why that word diagonalization comes in. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do, it's already kind of powerful, is we will apply it with the simplest possible function, the identity function. We're going to denote that in a kind of a weird way using another omega, a lowercase omega. So omega naught is just the identity function. It's just it's nothing fancy. It's just omega naught of n just equals n. So at this point, right now, we're kind of overcomplicating things by giving that a fancy name. Um, but it does turn out to be incredibly powerful. And there's, there's good connections to other uses of this symbol omega naught in like ordinals. Um, but I'm going to kind of suppress that because we don't need to know that. So here's the deal. Um, it's a new label or a new control argument for our sequence of f functions that's not just an integer. It's a new kind of gadget. And the omega naught f function applied to n by the rule we had just a, a, just up here is you take omega naught and let it eat n to produce a number. Well, that all that does is it produces n. And then you take f of n comma n. And that's where we get a diagonalization. Well, let, me, let me just give you a few examples and then I'll show you, maybe at the start of the next one, I'll show you the, the picture of why that's uh, we can think of that as a diagonal in a grid. You might want to think about that as I gave you the examples. So <clears throat> f of omega naught. So this is one function. F of, it's just f of omega. So this is one fixed symbol. And this is one fixed function that's got all these different inputs. And the key is that the input now also tells you which function to look, to look up, which function to use. So with input zero, we just use f of zero, which is really basic and boring, and this actually just gives you the successor of zero, which is one. 
when input is 1, we plug that into the f1 function, which is 2. Again, not impressive. When f is 2, we plug it into the next function on our list. f of 2, 2 is 8. Again, not super impressive yet. Now it starts to get impressive. When n is 3, we look up the 3 function. And we say, what's f of 3, 3? We've been calling that t of 3. That's bigger than 2 double up 3. Moderately big, but not crazy. Absolutely not crazy. And then when n equals 4, we're now accessing the 4 function. OK, that's getting kind of big. Um, if we've got, let's say, f of omega naught like 100, Suddenly, that is way beyond anything we did explicitly before. Because to to continue, if I continue that story I had before with the explicitness I had before, I'd have to sh talk about f of five something, f of six something, f of seven something, all the way up to f of one hundred, and that would be so so much faster growing than even f ninety nine, which is so much faster growing than f of ninety eight, which is et cetera et cetera et cetera. And then I'm plugging a hundred into that function. So this is a single function that outpaces every single other function. This is going to grow faster than any single f of kn if the k has to be fixed. Because now we've made something that was fixed into something that's variable. And yet, it is still just one function, but we needed a new label for it. And the cool thing is the exact, the most elegant way to label that is let functions count as new things that can be labels or, or what I like to call control arguments for f. Now, I wouldn't claim this is absolutely light years. Just blow your mind bigger than like f of a fixed number and then put in a variable in the, in the input slot. But it is bigger because the control slot grows along with the input slot. So that diagonalization is a qualitative leap to some extent. What we'll see is that when we combine that with um, successor and iteration, then it becomes ridiculously powerful, and we're going to take that story very far.